Hello everyone and welcome to Irini's Crochet Corner. A couple of months ago I came across a video explaining uh, a different technique for tapestry crochet. That technique uh, helps us make a double-sided tapestry crochet having the graph on both sides instead of having a front uh, or a right and a wrong uh, side of the work if we can say. So um, this video was not in English, but I challenged myself to learn uh, this technique and I made a couple of graphs uh, with it. And then I contacted the person behind that channel. Her name is Alexandra and the channel is called Alfeka Crochet. I'm going to leave a, a link to this channel uh, down in the description box. I asked her if she's okay if I can make a video in English explaining the technique and she accepted. So thank you so much Alexandra, I'm so excited about this video and um, please go visit her channel, she has lots of interesting stuff to share with you guys. And uh, so let's get started. To begin, um, I'm gonna use two uh, different colors of yarn and a five millimeter hook. And I just came up with a graph. I used a graph paper, I'm just gonna put this away. This is the graph that I came up with. It's a very simple graph. The shaded squares uh, will be in blue. The uh, like blank squares will be in orange. It's, um, a, motif, a, mo a square motif of nine stitches in the row and we're going to do nine um, rows. So let's get started. As we've said, I'm going to start with the orange doing the blank squares. So I'm going to start you doing nine foundation chains and then we're going to start the first a row of nine stitches in orange. We read the graph from the bottom right side most of the time, like sometimes people prefer to read it from the upper left corner, but usually it's from the bottom uh, right side. So that's what we're going to be doing uh, today. So I'm going to be uh, doing my foundation chains and then I'm going to be starting from this point. So let's start together. So I'm going to start doing nine foundation chains. Okay. Now to start my first row, I need to chain one. That's my turning chain. So now I have 10 and I'm going to grab my other yarn right there. And although my first row is a solid or orange color, I'll carry my other yarn with me just to have the same density uh, in each row. So I'm going to skip the first chain. This is the turning chain that I've just done. And I'm going to start working into the next chain. So I'll go into the chain, making sure that my other carried yarn is above the hook and I'm gonna pull a loop. I'll do a yarn over and pull a loop. I have two uh, loops on the hook. I'll yarn over and go through one loop only. So I still have two loops on the hook. I'll go into that same stitch again right there. Again making sure that I have the carried yarn on top of my hook. I'll yarn over and pull a loop. Three loops on the hook. I'll yarn over and go through the three of them at the same time. I'll repeat it again. Into the next chain. Right there. My carried yarn is above my hook. Yarn over, pull a loop, 
yarn over go through one loop go back into the sink stitch yarn over pull the loop and then yarn over and go through the three of them one more time next stitch in there pull a loop yarn over pull, go through one loop back into the stitch yarn over three loops on the hook yarn over and go through the three of them and we're gonna repeat the same sequence till we finish the row So this is my first row. If we look at the back, the blue yarn is pretty much hidden in this stitch. So let's start row number two. Let's check our graph first. So as we have agreed, we're working from this side. So we did the first row of orange and then we're co coming back with one stitch in orange and then seven stitches in blue and then one stitch in orange. So I'm gonna chain one to turn and then I'm gonna turn my work. Again, making sure that I'm carrying my yarn with me. Now I'm gonna skip this first chain. This is the turning chain. And then I'm gonna be working into the next stitch. Now, we're not gonna be working under the V only. Actually, we're gonna enter the hook under this side here, this one, and then under the V. So we have to make sure that we're taking this loop with us before going under the V stitch. Okay. I'm gonna go back here. Adjust my yarn. And then here's the loop right there. And then the V. This is what it looks like from the other side right here. So it's kind of another V on the other side. Hope it shows on the camera. Okay, and then we're gonna do the same stitch. So, so we're gonna yarn over, pull a loop, yarn over, go through one loop, and then go back again under that side of the stitch and then the V and pull another loop. Now we have three on the hook. Now because the next stitch is gonna be in blue, I'm not gonna finish my stitch with the orange yarn. Actually, I'm gonna drop it and pick the blue yarn. 
Now before I finish my stitch, I want to pull my yarn a little bit so it's not protrude, protruding from the side here. So pull a little bit, but not too much because you don't want to have a curved side here. And then finish your stitch using the blue yarn. Okay, now I'm ready to work my seven stitches in blue. Again, the same stitch, there is no change. Okay, I'll pull this side of the stitch first and then I'll go under the V. And this time I'm making sure that I'm carrying my orange yarn with me. I'll yarn over and pull a loop right there. Yarn over, pull a loop. And then go back into the same stitch, pull a loop. And finish your stitch right there again give your orange uh, yarn kind of a pull not so tight just to make sure that everything is in place so I'm gonna repeat the same sequence six more times again this side of the stitch then the V and my carried yarn right here. Pull a loop, yarn over, go through one loop, back into the stitch, pull a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through the three of them. So here I am at the end of the seventh stitch in blue. I didn't finish the stitch because I need to do, uh, do the last uh, stitch in orange. So I'll drop the blue yarn and pick the orange yarn and finish my stitch with the orange color. Now I'll carry my blue yarn and finish the last stitch the same way I did the rest. And this is what at the second row looks like from this side and if we look at the back it's the same uh, look so both sides look the same now we're ready to start the third row so for the third row I'm on this side I have two stitches in orange and then five stitches in blue and then two stitches in orange. So again, I'm gonna yarn over, that's my turning, uh, sorry, I'm gonna chain one, that's my turning uh, chain right there. And then I'm gonna turn my work, I'll carry the blue yarn Again, making sure that I'm pulling this loop on my hook before going under the V. So I'll go in, yarn over, pull a loop, yarn over, go through one loop, two loops on the hook, and go back again into the stitch, yarn over and pull a loop. And then yarn over and pull through the three of them. 
Now you see that yarn here just needs to pull a little bit so we can get it into our work. Now the next stitch, going under this side and then under the V, yarn over, pull a loop, yarn over, go through one loop, go back in there, yarn over, and our next stitch is gonna be in blue, so I'm gonna drop the orange and pick the blue. And finish my stitch with the blue color right there just have a look here everything looks okay so we can continue now five stitches in blue make sure that you carry the orange color with you So here I am at the end of my five stitches in blue. So I'm going to drop the blue yarn and pull the orange yarn to finish it. And then I'll finish the last two stitches in orange. And this is the end of row three. Looks the same on both sides. So I'm gonna finish up this graph. I'll work, I'll work it all up and I'll show you what it looks at the end. And I'm gonna put a link to this simple graph just in case you wanna practice uh, along with me. So I'll put um, this graph, um, like a link for it into in the description box. So here is my finished uh, piece. I carried the blue yarn along the last row, although the last row was a solid orange color. Again, the reason behind this is to keep, to keep the thickness of each row uh, the same. This keeps uh, the thickness um, the same through the rows. Now this is uh, one side and this is the other side. And on the sides here you can see the yarn that we carry over and this can be masked by doing a, a single crochet stitch across the whole thing after you're done. So after you've done your graph just go along the sides and do a single crochet and this will hide whatever you're carrying along on the sides so here is the last the finished piece this is my graph again thank you so much alexandra for uh, allowing this video to happen and um, I'll leave a, ch a link to her channel down in the description box. Please go and check her videos and I'll see you next time.